Now let's go on to TRT. Uh, tell us about the risks. You know, there was a lot of you know, indication about risk to prostate health and then looking at uh, causing emboli, you know, pulmonary embolism and looking at venous embolism. What is your view now on TRT with regards to safety and risk? Yeah, so uh, TRT, I would say with the last, last study that came out. It's not like one study makes a huge difference, but there was a big study out of the New England Journal of Medicine. And uh, I believe in a week, our podcast on that comes out. We filmed it last week. Yeah. So it's almost done editing. Um, and we posted about it on Instagram as well. But yeah, it looks at the risks, uh, the cardiovascular risks, or the heart risks of TRT. Mm -hmm. And they chose an extremely high risk population. So they had a lot of balls to choose that group. So I was very thankful for that. But basically, it did not increase the incidence of heart attack or stroke. It slightly decreased the incidence of diabetes. They studied them for just three years. So um, it's hard to make a huge difference in that. But it did have a slight clinically significant effect. And there were slightly more blood clots and also uh, slightly more incidences of AFib or arrhythmias. And the, I guess the caveat to that is the blood pressure slightly increased. And we don't know what uh, antihypertensive therapy they used. So for individuals on TRT that are also high risk, if they're not a high risk group, then they likely still have some of these same risks, but they're just not going to happen near as often. Um, for example, I think one in a hundred got a blood clot in the lung, a potentially life-threatening condition that was in this very high group, uh, high risk group. And one in 200 got a blood clot that was in the placebo group. But um, the they didn't screen them for things like factor V laden, which is a pretty common cause of um, a, a hypercoagulable predisposition. Basically, mm -hmm. your blood will clot easier. And there's other things like prothrombin three, antithrombin, or sorry, prothrombin, antithrombin three, lupus antiquagulant, antiphospholipid antibody syndrome, um, high platelet counts secondary to mm -hmm. estrogen. So the higher your estrogen goes, you need to check your platelets to make sure they don't go too up go far. And then thromboxane, which is basically the stickiness of your platelet, which even endogenous testosterone will um, dysregulate. Okay. So you have to take into account all of these factors. That's why I say, if you're a hormone expert, you can't just know how to dial in hormones. There's lots of uh, health coaches. Or actually, there's just lots of people that are interested in health optimization, and they could likely, if they were allowed to go get over-the-counter testosterone, they could get labs on my website without, you know, they could just go get them themselves, no oversight whatsoever. And they could bring themselves to a total testosterone of 900 and a free testosterone of 25 pretty easily. But you have to be well-versed in all organ systems. So depending on the person, rather than just, you know, instead of ordering those tests for every single individual, choose the ones that are at moderate or high risk. And then for those at low risk, you still mention them, but um, say, you know, regardless of this, then it's not going to significantly change our management. Okay. That's why it's important to get, uh, you know, actual health advice yeah. rather than self-prescribing your TRT. But overall, pretty safe if guided by very, I mean, it's another level of depth here of hormonal health and organ systems, but generally well tolerated. But once you start TRT, is that it? you got to be on for good. I mean, once you start that process, does someone then have to just sort of budget long term with regards to TRT? The way I describe it is it's a indefinite commitment. I used to say lifetime commitment. Mm. If you come off, then there's a 99.8% chance that you can regain all of your previous function. If you come off cold turkey, you're going to feel terrible when you come off. So I don't recommend that anybody does that. Mm. But there are many good ways to get people off TRT. And I've helped probably hundreds of people at this point get off TRT for various different reasons. Mm -hmm. But most that come off just weren't ready to come on or they weren't thinking about that there was an unforeseen side effect, often fertility. Mm -hmm. That being said, some of the best sperm counts that I've ever seen are men on TRT, okay. um, often with HCG, FSH, L-carnitine, et cetera, gonadotropin sometimes, but still, um, it's most people that go on TRT can come off. That's why it's very important to know your pre-TRT 
LH, FSH, and total and free testosterone, and ideally prolactin and estradiol as well, because that way you can know what to expect that you can get back to. Okay. And that's male. And I mean, obviously female, are you supplementing TRT a lot with a lot of females now? Is it in the cream form? Is it the injectable form? Are they needing as much TRT as the male? I'd say about 50% of the times, uh, especially females with low DHEA sulfate, I supplement with TRT over supplementing with DHEA sulfate because often it just converts to estradiol even more often. And a lot of times they're already on a low dose of estradiol. Mm -hmm. Some females, especially with very low testosterone, before menopause or right around the time of menopause, I supplement with just testosterone and progesterone because they're still producing estradiol, but their progesterone levels have significantly decreased to where they're having symptoms. And also their androgen levels have decreased to where they're noticing body composition and metabolic changes. Mm. Um, lately, especially for females that no longer desire fertility, I've really liked oral lymphatically absorbed testosterone, undecanoate with dutasteride, um, a very it's extremely female friendly, partly because you can take it just in the morning, partly because you can take dutasteride with it and prevent um, androgenic side effects. Um, lymphatically absorbed and also cream converts to DHT more often. So great for females that are less sensitive to androgens, females that are more sensitive to androgens, almost paradoxically, injectable testosterone is often a better form. So a lot of times if a female has an average SHBG, quite sensitive to androgens, I'll use something just like three migs a week of injectable testosterone cypionate, and it won't budge their SHBG that much, and it'll be just enough to get them the metabolic benefit and also convert to estradiol a bit.